Looking at a Prusa i3 made by RepRap Guru, cost me $300. Uh, I think it was money well spent uh, for the product that you get. Took two weeks to get here in Japan. Uh, it was packaged very well, but the acrylic frame was cracked in two different places. The uh, main frame was cracked uh, where it came in uh, two different pieces. You can see there, and then down below the screen it was cracked, and then again down the bottom. So it came in two different pieces. The side frame part was also cracked. Uh, I used super glue, glued it together. I didn't want to wait uh, another few weeks for the frame to come back from Repram Guru. They did send me another complete frame, not just two parts was broke, so thanks for that. I've uh, left it the way it is. The uh, super glue is holding pretty well. I will swap it out eventually with the newer parts. Straight out of the box, it worked uh, pretty well. I had to teach myself uh, about G code, um, bed adhesion, and uh, just running the, the splicer software. I think I used a repeater host. All pretty simple. Um, I'm a Marine, so you can't say I'm that smart of a guy. I was able to figure this all out. There were some points where the instructions um, kind of contradicted themselves, but if you watch through the videos and then build it, it's uh, a little easier to figure out how to get together. Uh, the videos that Rep Rep Guru has on their website or their YouTube page were uh, excellent. They really helped, and the uh, PDF files helped. Um, you see here, I'm printing with uh, ABS. I uh, haven't had any uh, adhesion issues with it. The uh, bed heats up pretty well, uh, it sticks well with the capped on tape and the uh, glue stick. Issues I've noticed, the first one would be the frame. It's plastic, it's kind of flimsy, uh, it gets the job done when it's moving back and forth. It, uh, it shakes quite a bit. I don't think it's causing any issues with uh, the prints though. Another thing is these bearings up on top, the, uh, they'll walk themselves out. I think they should have uh, some kind of cover or something that keeps those from uh, popping out. Those threads are spinning up and down, they, uh, they come out. Another issue we had was on the Z-axis here. These nuts were walking themselves out. Well, not really walking themselves out. The, the whole the whole frame was coming apart. So what I did was uh, super glued another nut on top of it to keep them uh, from separating. Uh, not having that that axis parallel to the bed caused some issues. You can see on the other side the uh, the nut didn't stay on, but uh, it's it still still moves up down a little bit but it's not as severe as it was before but that issue has been fixed no uh, no more problems now one of the hardest problems with I guess any 3d printers is bed leveling um, adjusting this to get it all perfect you move one it moves everything else it's like doing a rack adjustment on a Detroit diesel 8v92 uh, I had an issue with a lot of these being nice and tight and then the one in the back wouldn't have any tension on it at all, that one right there. Uh, still having that issue, uh, not as severe now that I've uh, done some other modifications, but once you uh, get that bed leveling figured out and you get it set pretty well, uh, it's not something you have to worry about until you either take the bed off to resurface it or uh, you have some difficulty taking off the, the print where you move it and take it out of adjustment. Another issue we were having was uh, the actual bed frame. Um, I used some sheet aluminum to uh, make a new bed frame. Uh, a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, but you see here the original bed frame is uh, made of uh, acrylic and I thought it was a heat issue with it warping and not being able to level out. So what I did was I uh, added, glued down some tin foil to it to try to reflect that heat back up. Um, it didn't help the, the, the issue. Um, I figured out what the issue was. And it's not that the, the acrylic isn't thick enough. I mean, it's pretty thick. You can see how thick that is. But it's because the points where you level out are so far out of the edge that there just isn't uh, enough sport with this this design here. If it was uh, solid without these uh, these cutouts, then, then maybe it would work. But yeah, 
down these far corners here, um, especially on that one side with only the one mount, had some issues. So you can see that this plate's got four mounts. Um, like I said, lots of measuring. You can see here, I uh, drew it all out before uh, before I built it. Um, I believe I used millimeters to do this. This was a little more accurate, and uh, my micrometer or my caliper that I have is uh, is metric, not standard. You see, I chamfer some of the holes so the bolts wouldn't or the, not the bolts or the screws wouldn't get stuck. And uh, all the screws went in pretty well. Uh, everything lined up perfect. I used a drill press to make sure everything was straight and even, and the uh, drill didn't fall at all. It's super firm now. There's no flex in it at all. Um, super stable. Everything's nice and parallel. It slides in and out very well. Uh, did a brush surface on it. Flex all the heat up towards the bed. Um, no issues with warping in the heat. So I think this uh, was one of the better modifications. Here on the heated bed, uh, I can't remember which connection it was. One of these connections came uh, came loose, so I had to re-solder it. And it had something to do with it moving in and out, and the wires bending in and out. Um, I got other plans for that too, so I don't have any other other issues. Another tree we had was these bearing mounts. Now the bearings themselves, the uh, linear bearings as they're called, they work great. Uh, the issue I had with these was there wasn't enough uh, distribution of weight on the bed surface. I think it was one of the other issues I was having with the the bed leveling. So you can see uh, now instead of just two holes or two mounting screws, there's four for each one. Um, I actually printed these with the old bearings, so they're, I mean they're good enough to print its own replace parts. But the original one uh, had one on one side and and two on the opposite side now now there's one on every corner and I had to do some trimming to uh, one of the linear rods there uh, they, it was hitting the acrylic but it worked out now that's one of the reasons it's more uh, more stable so in the back here you have the stepper motor drivers you got one two three and then one in the back there they're getting too hot the glue fell off of uh, one of them or they're just stuck on there so what I did was I uh, glued this uh, fan on there and I ran it off the uh, the uh, 12 volt power supply the fans kind of loud but it works well it keeps uh, the little heat sinks a little cooler now so I don't have to worry about uh, them overheating and popping and, and ruining the print Another modification I did here was the, uh, the axis across the top here. I flipped it completely around. Uh, I didn't like the stepper motor over on the other side where it uh, kind of stuck out kind of far, kept the head from coming up all the way over. Uh, it was pretty easy to do. There was one screw in the pulley that I had to flip around uh, and I had to flop, flip flop the wires. Uh, to that stepper motor, not a problem. You can see I added some lights to it, uh, strip LEDs. Uh, I wanted to see the that adhesion layer real well where I had the printer set up in my living room. It wasn't uh, sufficient light. So you can see it's uh, wired in right there, the power box for a short wire. Super easy and uh, I think it's a great addition to this uh, this printer. So this is the screw I'm talking about. Uh, it stuck out too far on the other side, so flipping the screw over where the head was on the back side, uh, it wasn't hitting the acrylic anymore. They got rid of that issue. You can see the uh, LED lights kind of adds a cool little yellow tint to that that acrylic frame on the edges. Really like the way this looked uh, with it not sticking out on the front right, but kind of tucked back on the left there. The, uh, the stepper motor that is. Um, it was an easy modification. I got the idea from looking at another uh, Prusa i3. Uh, really like the way this looks compared to uh, the way that uh, Rep Rep Guru had it set up. So when you look at this online, whether it's the Amazon website or Rep Rep Guru's website, you see all this wire loom that's on it. It didn't have that. I added all this to it because it was just a mess of wires. Uh, one of the big issues I was having with the print bread 
uh, ones was the uh, printer bed wires were getting caught uh, in the back there around the stepper motors and all the uh, all the bars. So that wire loom has definitely helped. The wires haven't broke off yet. I'm thinking about some way to suspend the wires so uh, there's even a less uh, chance of those those wires breaking off the uh, print bed. There's another issue I was made aware of even before I started building this uh, this printer, and that was these two rods right here. They're too long. Everyone online says they're too long, so I can't remember if it was a quarter inch or three quarter of an inch, but luckily I had a shop um, where I was able to cut those. Uh, those need to be a certain length so when they fit in together, these rods fit into the acrylic frame at the, the correct distance. And I trimmed them down where there was actually a little bit of play. Um, so it was an easy fix, but it's because I work in a shop with the uh, the correct tooling. If it's some geek in uh, you know, his mom's basement, he might not have the, the proper tooling to, to trim those thick steel rods. Another thing is these uh, screws that hold the stepper motor on were too short. Uh, I had to go out in town and sourcing parts here in Japan is kind of difficult because I'm on the island of Okinawa and it's hard to find just about anything but I did find some screws that would uh, fit in there and they fit a little longer they were just uh, a little too short they only stuck about a sixteenth of an inch from the other side to hold that motor on and these things are kind of torquey so I think that was long enough to, to take care of it and I was worried about stripping them out because it's only a couple threads it was catching on one of the nice features I haven't really taken advantage of is the uh, ability to do remote printing. It's got the uh, onboard screen here with the controls. Uh, you can preheat the extruder and the bed, set your homes. Um, I mainly use it for monitoring temperatures and feed rates of uh, why it's in, in operation. But anything you do on the laptop, you can pretty much do the controls. Probably a little more difficult to do through the controls in here by just using the repeater host um, software on a laptop. But it's a nice feature, I like it. Overall, for $300, I think I have a great product. Only did a few modifications to it. The uh, biggest one, I think, is that print bed. I think it's one of the issues that Rec Rep Guru should address. I don't know if I've seen anyone else uh, talking about it. I haven't been on the forums too much, but I learned quite a bit building this, uh, printing with it. I got into wood filament recently, which is a little more difficult to work with, and it's kind of not really a whole lot out there. Tell me what temperatures you use and stuff. So it was a bit of a learning experience, but I really enjoy it. I would definitely recommend this to uh, other customers who are thinking about getting into 3D printing. It's just awesome being able to uh, you know, make these little models and prototypes and be able to do it all there on your, on your desk in your office. So, all right, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video review of the uh, RepRap Guru Prusa i3. Have a nice one.